Uh, good morning. How's everyone? The energy is a bit low. So once again, good morning, everyone. OK, so uh, my name is Ankush. Uh, leave you with this. Um, the event is about digital transformation using marketing and technology. And today's world, as this graphic shows, that we have sales, marketing, and technology constantly at odds with each other. And the end goal is we all want to look at business goals. We all want to increase sales. We want more customer engagement. We want more customer retention. Who am I? So I've been in the industry for a couple of years, uh, worked in the US, studied in the US, uh, back in India now. Uh, have some experience both with B2C and B2B marketing. OK, today's world, it's 2019. We have marketing constantly evolving and changing. Technology itself is changing on a daily basis. So when you combine both marketing and technology, things are progressing very, very quickly. The term MarkTech is a new concept, relatively new. It was coined probably in 2000, and it came into being about 10 years back. So MarkTech is relatively new in the big scheme of things. I'm here to talk a little bit about MarkTech 101, what exactly it is. I have a lot of you speakers here understand what is MarkTech. We'll hear from all the experts on different examples, different case studies, how different companies in different sectors are using MarkTech. What exactly is it? What is the stack? How does it help us? How does it help you get more business? I'm going to have a few minutes to talk about that. Very outset, I'd like to thank Sunil and the team for inviting me here. What is MarkTech? It is basically a blending of marketing and technology. It helps marketeers use technology to get more business. At its very core, that's why we are all here, to understand how marketing and technology can help companies and businesses grow. What is a stack? A stack is basically a grouping of different technologies that are integrated and work together to attract, retain customers, both B2C and B2B. Now again, the topic of this event is digital transformation. So at the heart of digital transformation is customer experience. If your customer experience is good, both at B2B and B2C, that's when you get customer delight. And the only way to do that is using a MarkTech stack. Again, you combine marketing and technology to get business results. If you were to Google MarkTech landscape today, and all of you can do that, the very first result you always see is Scott Brinker. Now, Scott Brinker is currently the editor of the MarkTech. He is uh, currently at HubSpot. And he has a conference twice a year in Boston and San Francisco on talking about MarkTech landscape. So what exactly is this landscape? As I said, about 10 years ago, this term was coined by Scott. And every year since 2011, he has been making this landscape. In the very first year, there were about 150 components in the MarkTech landscape. Today, there are over 7,000 components in the MarkTech stacks, which means that there are 7,000 companies vying for your business, vying to make the stack perfect for you. Why are there 7,000 companies? Because no single solution is perfect for every company. What is the holy grail for every business? How do you get more customers? What content do you show to them? When do you show to them? Do you show them on the TV? Do you show them on the mobile, on your website, in stores? How do you target them? When do you target them? How do you convert them? How do you get more business? How do you retain your customers? You have to put together a blending of technologies to make this work. This is what the graphic looks like. I'm sure you still can't understand any of the logos because as I said, there are over 7,000 logos on this graphic. Broadly, they are grouped into ads, experience, 
social, sales, data, and how do you manage the whole thing? So these are the different categories. As I said, all of this needs to work together to get your business goals fulfilled. This is how you do your digital transformation. So I represent Deloitte, which works with CMOs all over the world. And of course, we've been in India for a number of years. Now, MarkTech in India itself is growing. Over the last 10 years, MarkTech has exploded. And this is a couple of years uh, old data. But in 2025, in India, MarkTech is going to be a $50 billion opportunity. Globally, MarkTech spend is going to reach over $200 billion. That's how big the opportunity for MarkTech is. Most of us are in the marketing domain. And because marketing and technology changes so fast, the CMO has tons and tons of challenges. How do I get more customers? How do I convert them? How do I retain them? The world is moving to a subscription model. Everything is becoming a service. It's a SaaS world. It's not just about getting customers. How do you convert them? But how do you retain them over multiple years? So these are some of the challenges. Uh, I'll try to speak about a minute on each of those. The number one challenge for every CMO is how do I enhance the customer experience? How do I make it a little more human? How do I elevate the human experience? If I get a customer to buy in my store, do I attribute the sale to the store or to the Google search, which I did two days ago? Similarly, when we look at multi-channel and omni-channel, what is the attribution of the sale? It's the same thing like if you have a pot and you put a spoon of water in it and you keep putting the spoon of water, at the 100th spoon of water, it starts overflowing. The attribution is not necessarily on the last spoon of water. It could be on the first one. Or it could be a linear progression of you attribute it to all those droplets of water which cause the conversion. Marketing, technology, and sales needs to be integrated. But how do you do it? Who does it? Who manages it? That's the challenge of the CMO. How do I use that to increase my sales? Today, marketing is not just a cost center. It's a revenue driver. Marketing helps increase sales. It's not just something that you do on TV or in other channels without impacting sales. Marketing directly contributes to sales. You do that with data. 10 years ago, there was scarcity of data. Today, we have too much data. You have data from everything. How do you make sense of that data? How do you use that data for measurable, actionable results? How do you personalize your messages? How do you personalize what messaging you're giving to each and every person? If I get something like, hi, first name, doesn't make a sense, or hi, customer, I won't even open the email. It should be personalized to me, to what I like, what I'm potentially going to be interested in. You have to personalize everything. The world has become social in nature. Everything is on Facebook. Everything goes via Google. Everybody looks at LinkedIn. Everybody posts on Twitter. Both B2C and B2B have to look at social media as a very, very important channel. Now, that also is a challenge for CMOs. How do I manage so many different channels for every, everyone on every channel? Lastly, now, if I'm a CMO, I want a single view of all my customers, what they have been doing across all the channels, what do I need to do, what is the customer life cycle, what is the journey from the first time they see me on Google till the time I make a purchase. And as I said, it's a service subscription model, how do I retain that customer month over month or year over year? What is the single view? How do I get that single view of everyone and what they have done over time? Some of these challenges can be reduced by using a MarkTech stack. Now, as I said, it is the blending of marketing and technology. A MarkTech stack has to be integrated with multiple things. When you do have a stack, and you can start small, you can have three, four, five components, 
or you can make it really, really complicated. You can have 50, 70 different components helping you accomplish your business goals. What are the benefits of a stack? Why do you need a stack? The very outset, you need to define your goals. Both marketing and sales have to be aligned in what are my goals for this month, this quarter, this year, the next three years, next five years. You need to understand, okay, am I gonna increase my customer acquisition by 7%, I'm gonna increase my retention by 10%, et cetera, et cetera. You put numbers to the goals, both marketing and sales have to work together. You have to be aligned with the technology team because again, marketing, technology, and sales have to work together. As I said, you need to plan this out. You plan one month, three, six, 12 months ahead, and you execute on that plan. Again, strategy and execution have to go together. You plan for what you're gonna do, how you're gonna do it, and then you go and measure it. The stack helps you save time. You don't send the same email uh, to different people. You send different emails to different people. You don't have to do it manually. It can be all automated very, very easily using a stack. All data has to be integrated with the entire, within the entire stack. Data has to flow bi-directionally in real time between different components. So your CRM has to know what your marketing automation is doing. Your data silos have to be knowing which customer clicked on what email, on what Google result, and did they click the add to buy button? Did they call my call center? Did I have a meeting at a particular event? All of that data has to be exchanged with all the different components. ROI. If you don't measure the ROI, you can't get the value of the stack. You have to measure the ROI. Every campaign, because it's digital, can be measured. Everything in digital can be measured. That's the beauty of digital marketing. You measure everything, and then you can compute the cost. What is the cost per lead? What is my cost per click? What is my cost per acquisition? What is the life cycle of my customer? All of that can be computed. Lastly, the single view, your CRM and marketing automation is all integrated. You get a single view of every customer, of every prospect, of every lead. That's what the stack does for you. Now, some of you might be thinking, maybe I have a stack, maybe I don't have a stack. But what are the basic components of a stack? And as I said, you can have four or five components to start with. And then you can basically have a super complicated MarkTech stack with like 70 different components. At its core, you basically have these five components. You have your CRM system, you have your marketing automation platforms, the, you have your content, you, you have your data and analytics, and of course you have your social media. These are just some examples. So it's by no means a complete list. Again, these are some examples both at enterprise, SMB, and mid-market, and of course startups. Again, these are some examples of solutions that you can use across all your five components. Now we've heard the term before, what about my paid media, what about my earned media, what about my all kinds of video media? That all comes as well, right? So as I said, this is a basic stack. You can have a really complex stack as well, but if you want to start really small, at the bare minimum, you need these five components. Now this can tie into your ERP system, this can tie into your e-commerce system, this can tie into your advertising platform. This is basically a very, very simplified view of what your stack would look like. So again, as I said, some of you may already have a marketing stack today. Some of you may be looking at enhancing, changing, optimizing what you already have. What are the best practices? We have been working with CMOs for a really long time, both with companies who don't have a stack and with companies who have been using some form of a stack for 10, 15, 20 years. So in both cases, you need to evaluate what you have. If you already have something, you need to evaluate how is it working out for me? What is my baseline? How can I improve every component? What do I need to change? If you don't have a stack, you start small. You start with two or three components at a time. You build it, you integrate it, you see how it's performing for you. You have, you change your needs, you then add more components to it. You measure your baseline metrics. You measure 
what you want to accomplish, what are your goals, and how is the stack performing for you. That again has to be done in both cases. To do all this, you need people. You may need a digital marketing guy, you might need a CRM expert, you might need a marketing automation expert, you need a data analyst, et cetera. So you need to plan for what type of people do you need, what are the skills of the people, do I have them in-house or do I need to go to an external company to help me out? Keep it scalable. If you're starting small, don't start with 25 different components. Start with three or four or five components and then expand it as you go on. Marketing changes every day. Technology changes every day. So you should be willing to adapt and change. Your stack should be scalable. You should add and remove components as and when required. You should be able to change your marketing strategies as the world changes. And lastly, again, we have to work closely with the sales team, with the CIO, the CFO. You need to budget for all this. Again, if you already have a stack, you need to budget on how you're gonna pay for all these changes. What is your ROI? What is the cost of the people I'm gonna get? What is the cost of implementing? And this is in addition to your ad spend. So you need to have a good budgeting for three, six, 12 months into the future. At the heart of everything, your stack is what decides your customer experience. Again, the topic of the event is digital transformation. Digital transformation can be done when you enhance your customer experience. If you elevate the human experience is when you will get more customers, you will convert more of them, and of course you will retain more of your customers. So for good customer experience, a marketing stack is the heart of any digital transformation. Uh, this is my ID. I would uh, be happy to talk to anyone. Do we have time for questions? Is it now or later? Uh, are there any questions? I think I have like four or five minutes for questions. Is there a mic? Okay, we can take the questions uh, later as well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if anybody has questions on what we do, what Deloitte does on digital transformation or marketing technology, feel free to reach out to me either on email or on LinkedIn. I will be here till the evening. So I will be happy to meet with any one of you. Thank you so much.